this is the Lakeshore Hall Effect Measurement System. It is designed to measure the electronic properties of conductive materials when they are exposed to a magnetic field. It was originally discovered in uh, 1879 by Edwin Hall, a physicist from Harvard University. Uh, however, it was not popular at all until later in uh, decades um, when it was used quite a bit in the emerging semiconductor industry. The easiest way to demonstrate the Hall effect is I have a, just a plain piece of steel, which is of course an electric conductor. And when you apply a current to this piece of steel, or any electric conductor, the electrons will move forward in a straight line in a path from one potential to another. However, when you take this electrical conductor and you surround it with a strong magnetic field, what will happen is it will deflect those electrons to one side or another. This is called formally the Lorentz force. And what this does is this will charge one side more positive and the other side negative. Now, this voltage potential across these sides is called the Hall voltage. consists of two main units, the electronics console and the electromagnet console. Now the electronics console consists of all the metering and network devices. There is a Keithley nanometer, a Keithley picoammeter, a Keithley precision current source which actually sends a current to your sample. And most importantly, the Lakeshore Gauss meter, which measures the magnetic field. In addition is the Lakeshore 775 matrix unit that has the ability to take all your different readings from all your meters, put them in a format that is very presentable on the computer. The part of the electronic system is the actual power supply that is used um, to generate power to the electromagnet. Of course, the other part of the system is the electromagnet console itself. Uh, it consists of the magnets, the Gauss meter pro, along with the sample module for putting your sample in and out of the electronic field. Taking a look at the connections in the back, the connections in the back, uh, the water chiller or the water supply supplies cooling water to both the magnets supply. The magnet power supply can generate uh, at high currents uh, 2400 watts, so it is something that has to be worked. In addition, while we're here, we have the main power plug coming in, and these are the power leads going to the magnets. Uh, this is a bipolar magnet system, so we go from one side, series out, and to the other. Now, this is very important to mention. This is the Gauss Meter Pro. This probe actually measures the magnetic field when it is generated. This tip is very sensitive, so a lot of care has to be taken when you insert this probe into the magnetic field to make sure it doesn't collide with your sample when it comes down. Uh, there's a very nice, clear instruction in the book on how this works. Two units work in unison, however, the heart of the equipment is definitely the specially designed electromagnets that are precisely controlled by the bipolar magnet power supply. Uh, to illustrate how the magnet works, very simple. We can turn
turn power on to the magnets immediately or we can slowly ramp it up and slowly ramp it down. For purposes of this demonstration, let's say I put in a ramp rate of 10 amps per second. And I put in a current value of 20 amps. That means that within several seconds it will ramp up to a current of 20 amps at 9.3 volts and its magnetic field um, is displayed here on the Gauss meter. In the same respect, when you remove power, it ramps back down. Now, to give you an illustration of how strong these magnets really are, It's important to know that if you have any kind of conductive jewelry on, even if it's gold plated, if it's, a, if it's a magnetic property of some sort, this magnet does have the strength to pull right off your hand. So if you were standing close and you had this, the power of this magnet, let's say, almost full, you could have that ring pulled right to this magnet. So this is a safety precaution that should be followed. Let me demonstrate. Now, once it ramps up, it'll pull it right out of my hand. And while I can pull this out, it, it is really in there tight. When we remove power to the magnet, and it ramps down. The piece will come off. The system comes uh, equipped with the sample module, model 75013. Uh, this particular model is used primarily for room temperature measurements and it has not only the two leads that go in that deliver current to your sample, but it also has four different points of measurement that can be used to uh, plot and display in the software. Now, where you actually place the sample? particular model, your sample is placed inside this canister. Now this canister has a connector to it, and this connector fits a product-specific uh, component that you can purchase from the manufacturer. What they are are sample card holders, and these sample card holders come in different configurations in order to um, accommodate your different geometries when you prepare your sample. Uh, they are available again in different configurations as well as the company also offers uh, a refrigerated sample module as well as a heated sample module. Now, um, the actual sample can be soldered in place or thinned in place but then once completed on the card, it would be inserted into the socket. And then lower into the potential magnetic field. The software that controls the system is the Lakeware software. It is menu driven. And it 
it's formatted in a way that it really allows you to easily put in your, um, your sample parameters. Um, the other thing that's important and very nice about this software is, uh, as a former LabVIEW user, I found a lot of similarities about this software and LabVIEW software, and it is really very comfortable to use. If you were setting up a sample, for example, what this software actually does is it mimics the physical preparation of that sample on your sample holder. For example, you could um, arrange your sample in the Van der Poel configuration or geometry. Established in 1958, it was widely used during the emerging semiconductor technology period. Or you can have the classic whole bar arrangements. For example, this one here, you will notice, is also the configuration on our module. So once you make the connections to your sample, and you set up the software to read that bar, it will automatically take all your data, transfer it from the meters, matrix system up until the up until the software. Now the software allows you to um, record data during the test runs in both tabular and graph form. Uh, this particular example is of a plot of voltage versus current. And you can also plot multiple points as well, variable field, field measurement. It allows you to take many different measurements, arrange them any way you want for the desired uh, plot. This is a very understandable system and an excellent platform for taking the measurements of the transport properties of electronic semiconductors and being able to combine all those points of data for display in a very, very organized fashion, making it very, very easy for the operator to use this equipment.